it'll go off the rails unless you have people who are come here willing to give their lives and die for this thing. Task Force died for this thing. The fact that people would accuse me of killing Task Force is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And you know, Marcus Conde, buy a whole bank of phones. What do we got here? Got a bird. And the bird was on his way somewhere. Where was he going? What is that? On the bird's arm. See? He's got these little cuffs on. See that? Right? It's like he was going somewhere and he just fell out of the sky. Where was he going? He was on his way home. He didn't make it. He didn't make it. He was on his way home. But who would have put him all the way out, away from his home? Who's responsible? Who was responsible, poor guy? Who was responsible? Who would do something so outrageous? See, this is gambling. This is human, humans gambling, racing. Pigeon race. A pigeon race. You take a pigeon and you bring him two, three thousand miles away from his home, away from his family, away from his friends. Put some cuffs on his on his ankles so you could identify him. And pigeons are so smart and so resilient. So determined to get home. That they'll fly three thousand miles by themselves to get home to be with their family and their friends nothing can stop them not even death and humans take advantage of that that desire to keep working right the power elite an example if they weren't just gamblers guys gambling right ten people a hundred people put up a put up a pigeon and then they cuff his ankles and then whosoever pigeon gets home first wins the money right he's a slave the, the pigeon was a, is, was enslaved all he wanted to do was help his family and get home and he fell right out of the sky fell right out of the goddamn sky trying to get home Where's he from? I don't know. The answer to where he's from is in these... Is here. But that's not the point. The point is not to... Say, oh, look how bad... Find out who the bad people were that were racing pigeons. But the example of, of greed, where, where... A being like a pigeon is... Is, uh... Is used... Till every last breath in his body is taken away from him. No fight left. No fight left. Poor pigeon, right? My name is Marcus Conti reporting. Early in the morning. You never know where you're going to get a story. You know, you see the pigeon on the ground. Poor guy. Yeah. So to, uh, I just want to make a, a a shout out to the new people that are watching this channel. If you don't know, if you're new to this channel and you, it may seem like I'm all over the place. But what I what I do is I look for, I do look at the big picture. You know, with the with, especially with that things like pseudo bombers and and shootings and, but also the bigger political picture. Um, I do look at, but I, this this particular story is very interesting, and you should. If you, I'll just give you a quick background, right? So, in in August uh, 2018, a few months ago, August 12th. I'm sorry, what did I say? 18. August 12th, 2018. Did I get it right? <laughs> a, uh, a, uh, a citizen journalist. Her name is. Jen Moore 
also known as Task Force, died alone in a, uh, in a hotel room in Washington, D.C. Right? Now, the story is that she was an ex-cop, and she, it's a very interesting story. And it ties into international trade, espionage, possibly. A big story with Bill Clinton as a child rapist. Right? So she's a citizen journalist. So I'm just going to keep it short so you know where the story is before I get into the, the, uh, the, the murder part of it. So she's a citizen journalist. She's an ex-cop. And she goes to Washington, D.C. where she meets this gentleman named George Webb. Oh, fucking guy's doing all kinds of investigative work. Powerful man doing his investigative work. And she joins, allegedly joins forces with George doing his dirty work investigating his stupid stories about I don't know what right he's got her he's got he's got the the citizen journalist knocking on doors at Imran Awan these fucking dangerous dangerous Pakistani guys working with the Democratic Party he's got her knocking on the door right and then she dies right of hypo hyper cardiac you know va va vascular disease right she dies a heart attack not a heart attack but heart disease right was it egged on by pharmaceuticals was it was it a hit job we're still waiting we have we're waiting on an autopsy it's still an ongoing murder investigation murder investigation so it's fascinating in that we have, this is probably, I, I'll be honest, this is probably one of, a one-of-a-kind murder investigation crowdsourced done on YouTube. <laughs> right? One-of-a-kind. Where have you ever seen a murder investigation done on YouTube? Crowdsourced. Because it's a unique platform in that the players here are so egotistical and so fucking stupid and so willing to give testimony freely to everybody in their defense. <clears throat> right? So it's a very... Oh, you, you know what? I just noticed like this morning I was... I used to, I used to teach guitar to kids. See that shit? <laughs> fucking kids. They hate me, but... But when I got a guitar in my hand, they're best friends, man. That's me. An interesting quote too. That was from a. Uh, this is just a piece of paper, scrap paper from the from a lawsuit. And it says, I, I noticed that the the caption says, "With our thoughts, we make the world." Ooh, it's a Buddha the teaching. And the Buddha said, "The Buddha said that." Right? What did he? I don't know. <laughs> it's twenty five hundred years ago. Nobody knows what he said. So. So anyway, that's who Jen Moore is. That's who Task Force is. He was the sidekick of George Webb, the masterful, and powerful investigative journalist who has, has solved so many problems. And George has said, the fact that people would accuse me of killing Task Force is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. <laughs> It'll go off the rails unless you have people who are come here willing to give their lives and die for this thing. Task Force died for this thing. The fact that people would accuse me of killing Task Force is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And, you know, Marcus Conde, buy a whole bank of phones. You know, like those stockbrokers used to have 12 phones before, you know. Go get a bank of phones. Bygone. I love you, brother. Great research. Go get a bank of phones. You know, make 50 phone calls every minute to PG County. You know, uh, carpet bomb them with phones and leads about how I killed Task Force. You know, if you want to get my DNA and prove that I'm a Cherokee, you know, go for it. You know, maybe I'll get a $500,000 a year professorship at, at Harvard. Knock your lights out. If you don't think diplomatic containers exist, stay away from anybody in, in Customs and Border Patrol. Stay away from anybody at the State Department. They're going to burst your bubble. Why would George kill her? Well... There is speculation that George used to work for the CIA. 
<laughs> There's so much bullshit that we don't even know. But we do. I don't know. I heard there's a rumor that we've got a print. We got a fingerprint. We got some DNA. I don't know. We'll see what that turns up. What do you know on Jen Moore's autopsy or toxicology? Ooh, baby, 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 baby. Closing in. We are closing in. Closing in on you, George. Coming to get you. All right. So we got the DNA. <laughs> I slipped on that one. <laughs> we don't have the DNA. We might have it. So, so Mr. Webb is now Mr. Webb. I want to I want to talk about his research, right? Because it's very it's very important how to understand how much shit is piled on top of other shit. It's a shit storm. George Webb, Alcohol George, Alcohol George. All his videos in the beginning, drunk as a skunk. Drinking his wine. Oh, fucking. Alcohol George and all his stories, right? All his stories about Imran and Juan. But the, the, most, the most interesting one, in my view, and the most revealing one, is this nonsense about, about international trade and transportation that George is now an expert on. Right? And where is his research coming from? Ah, Alcohol George and his four whores. Ah, he's got a harem, George. Alcohol George's got a bunch of women running around fucking researching for him. Free of charge. I say, they're working on the, they're working on the investigation. <laughs> uh, investigation. All right. And people that, that, that challenge him, ah, Wearing baby shoes, ba baby bronze shoes. See, this is this is the story of the pigeon, where the pigeon owner sends his pigeons into the into the abyss, right? And they fall out of the sky, trying to trying to retreat, trying to get home, trying to solve the mystery of the investigation. Right? That's what this is, right? False prophet. Blind leading the blind. Or well, maybe not the blind leading the blind, but but a very, very astute scumbag leading the blind. Again, if you're just getting your uh, baby shoes, bronze, I, I don't have time for you. I can't come down there and, and explain to you. I showed you the Wikipedia entry where it's, it said started as a diplomatic pouch then a suitcase then the pouches got bigger then it turned into a container it says it right in the wikipedia google diplomatic container google diplomatic pouch i can't i can't come on i can't come down there and tie your baby shoes i can't i don't have time so his whole research effort again is based on the premise that cargo ships have this this unbelievable thing called diplomatic immunity they are immune that anything that they put in that container goes through customs unchecked that's the premise of George's theory and what is his evidence that supports that <laughs> this is the part you can't make up right he says it in his own words check Wikipedia <laughs> I showed you the Wikipedia entry where it's, it said started as a diplomatic pouch, then a suitcase, then the pouches got bigger, then it turned into a container. It says it right in the Wikipedia, Google diplomatic container, Google diplomatic pouch. I can't, I can't come on, I can't come down there and tie your baby shoes. I can't, I don't have time. I, but it was kind of cool you went out to New York Harbor. I like the pictures of the container ships, that was kind of cool. Wikipedia. Huh? Now, I'm not bashing Wikipedia. Wikipedia is an open source research, uh, you know, internet phenomena, right? Wonderful. I go there all the time, check shit out, right? Everybody does. We all look at Wikipedia. Not WikiLeaks, Wikipedia, right? It's the, it, the encyclopedia online, but it's, 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 it's essentially a crowdsource, right? And it's a good thing. 
But it's self-editing, right? And if you look at the entry that he's now screaming about, it was edited three days ago by somebody. I edit it at, Wiki, at Wikipedia. Anybody can do Wikipedia editing. But George Webb's whole story about diplomatic containers, how it went from the pouch to the, to the briefcase to four containers out in the harbor unchecked. Right? So you take a story like that and you research it and you realize that there's absolutely no, no evidence whatsoever. See, I, I, I live in evidence. Right? I know George Webb, is, he follows the, the idea that we don't do evidence. It's all spycraft and fucking tradecraft, whatever you want to call it. Right? Bullshit. I call that bullshit artist, you know, confusing people with bullshit instead of evidence. Right? So, there is no evidence, right? Actual cases, evidence of that occurring in New York ports, right? Weapons coming one way, weapons going the other way. And not only that, I gave you a guy, like I said, I lived here my whole life, right? I mean, the people that I know, or, you know, I know police, I know firemen, I know sanitation workers. I know all kinds of hard-working city, you know, city employees. And I know a crew of guys that work on tugboats. Some of them are captains. Some of them are, you know, longshoremen. That guys, they go out on those boats. I haven't even talked to those guys yet. I haven't seen them in a while, but I could call them up and find out. And nobody in their whole 30 years. Vinny Tugboat, great example. Great guy, very, very, a good, a good guy is telling you that when you go when when one of those cargo ships comes into the port there's dog sniffers they there's no way that you can get within 40 yards of one of those dogs without you know with powder explosive powder radioactivity radioactive activity <laughs> material like like explosives or 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 uranium or no fucking way could that stuff get in on one of those boats unless of course it was chucked off the side right as as he, he told us that if the if the crime is gonna happen it's gonna happen 20 20 miles offshore right so, so so is that a possibility yeah it is a possibility but the point is that this man has has piled has piled two years of research on a story that can't be validated that there's uranium and and it's I mean it's I think I find it I find it denigrating to the people that do that sort of work it's insulting to law enforcement that something like that could go on so undetected but the brilliant mind of this fucking idiot online can right we're so far out in front we don't have time to go back and tie your baby shoes that's the that's the bottom line that is a lazy piece of crap in his grandmother's basement. And then when he's found out to be a liar, he compounds it with lying every day for a hundred days. And then he forgets all about it and just blocks people on his channel that remind him about it. That is shit in journalism. This is where it's at. So is he capable of murder to cover his story? Is he capable of being so fucking stupid and so dangerous to the people around him that he got Jenny Moore killed. See, I, I stay in the evidence, right? The evidence, the story changes. He's spinning that story. Oh, fuck, I didn't do nothing. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Oh, get the police. Go ahead, give him the police. Give him my DNA. Oh. He's fucking running scared, right? Because you could try to spin the story all you want, Alcohol George, but the, the evidence doesn't change. See, the evidence is the evidence. And you've made a wonderful video record of your evidence and your testimony. See, that's how I'm talking about evidence. Right? Just keeping all these people in a fucking rabbit hole. <laughs> you fake bullshit. Uh, it's important to re-educate people in critical thinking 
and not get swayed into the, you know, the story of some some alcohol guy telling you a story to, you know, a, a bottle of a glass of wine and another story, right? Telling you stories about what's going on, because the real story, the real story is and always has been that these are distractions, things like 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 pseudo bombers and and shootings where the mass media throws all their attention on it while the oligarchy continues to rip everybody off right it's a monopoly we live in crony crony capitalism that's the target that's the thing that we need to we need to look at not fucking this this fictitious swamp of of pakistanis you know hustling drugs because if you get the money out of politics if you raise the corporate tax rate to 80 percent and you squeeze them down if you bring the oligarchy back down to size if you have free and fair elections getting money out of politics right term limits right <laughs> have have actual elections that count you count the ballots right then you start to come then you start to to arrive at normalcy you follow what I'm saying that these ideas of 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 chasing cargo ships around the country and around the world and 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 sitting there waiting for Hillary Clinton to get locked up or for Q to give us the answer Wah, fucking Q <laughs> you remember that one that's probably the greatest rabbit hole of the year or we can look at the evidence and what is that evidence? One in seven people on food stamps. 80% of the country living paycheck to paycheck if they have a job. 65% of the country doesn't have $400 to their name. How about you? How you doing? Huh? I don't know. I'm watching fucking Trump last night. He said the economy has never been so good. I don't know. This, where's your evidence? See, that's, that's tradecraft. That's politics as usual.